Thank you very much, Madam Chair. <clears throat> My uh, esteemed colleagues here at the panel have really um, done an excellent job of uh, summarizing some of the challenges and opportunities and uh, significant processes that are going on in the, uh, on the continent to bring agriculture, health, and uh, nutrition together. So you'll be glad to know that I won't add to that list. Um, in looking at our assignment, how we each do business or how we will, will do business going forward, um, I, my thoughts immediately turned more to process than, uh, than to content or to what, uh, what we need to do. And so um, I, I uh, ask you to just uh, indulge me to think a little bit about that, about the, the how uh, of the work that we do together. And um, I, would, I would propose that if we really want to, um, to meet the challenge of the crisis that we are facing that Jay so eloquently spoke about yesterday, we really need to look at how we do things and ask ourselves whether the processes we use in our meetings, in our gatherings, actually will lead to the kind of transformation that we, uh, that we all want. Um, one one um, way we might want to look at this is just to ask ourselves a little bit about what forms of talking and listening do we use in our work. Um, <clears throat> and uh, for instance, I think at this meeting and in most of our meetings, we always start off talking nice to each other. We... Um, we don't really go beyond the surface. We, when we're all happy, we all say what we want to do, and we actually don't listen to each other. We just, we just talk. And, and there's a certain way in which that's necessary that keeps the society moving. Then we move, of course, to the stock in trade of where I am now, an academic, and that's debating. Or we can say we talk tough. We have a point to make, and we will make it. And that's what we do. And a lot of what we have been doing here, I, th I believe, is in fact moving towards debate. And that's important because that's how we sharpen our, our perspectives. That's how we sort out the differences. And we need that. How do we listen in, in a debate? Normally, we listen to either hear whether the guy thinks the way I think or how he doesn't think the way I think so that I can attack him or her. I can say that's not true, I, I think this way. And so we debate, and, and that's a, a useful and important way for us to, uh, to talk. But I would say that if we really want to come to innovative solutions for the problems we face, we have to move to dialogue, to true dialogue, and eventually to what we would call generative conversations. And by that I mean that we need to practice our skills in listening for understanding. And I set myself the task coming to this meeting to see whether I can actually try to do that. And by that I mean listening to really understand what a person is saying. So in a, in a conversation, to follow what the person is saying by, by asking clarifying questions and really coming to the heart of what the person is saying. And I have to say, I find that very difficult. But I think that that is really something that we need to practice, is, is where, where is this person really coming from and how do they understand it? And how do we create spaces in which there's enough time for us to do that? I think we've been very good here at rapid fire, and that's important because we have to share the information. But I think we also, probably in our conversations in the passages, had much more of the dialogue. And one of the challenges we're uh, grappling with in the work that I do now is to actually create spaces for this kind of dialogue where we can actually spend enough time to come to some shared understanding of what's the really stuck issue we're trying to deal with here, and how do we move forward. Um, in generative dialogue, we, we go even further by really trying as a group to begin to think what wants to come up or what can emerge from the way we work together. 
So um, just to say that, that what we are trying to do um, at Stellenbosch University at the moment is uh, on the one hand to continue with the work of the um, Southern African Food Lab, which is uh, an effort to create such a space for dialogue, but also for action. So it's not just uh, a space for talking, but actually for based on a shared uh, identification of, um, of really stuck issues to begin to prototype solutions. And what I have found in that process is that when you bring together people from the private sector, the public sector, and, uh, and NGOs, and some academics, the conversation is often not fully informed with the research that's going on in the research community. So part of what we're trying to do is, is think through how can we make sure that, that these meetings have access to synthesized um, academic research information so that they use that as part of the input. Of course, we don't think that's the only knowledge that you used to need for decision making. You need local knowledge and you need practical knowledge, so it's also how you bring that together. But then we also uh, have now at the university a food security initiative like many other uh, universities and institutions. And, and the two challenges we face there is to make sure that the research that is decided upon in the sectors are actually informed by decision makers and by these kinds of processes where we identify the stuck issues. Are they addressing these issues? Very often we find the research is rather marginal to what the big issues are. So we need to figure out how, how to help the academic community to, to uh, frame a research agenda that, that fits the, the problems. Um, but then we also think that, that, the, um, that out of, we, we think that if we, if we run these um, spaces and places where people can truly dialogue, that out of that, can come some very meaningful research programs, and that's what we are trying to achieve um, in doing that. And I believe that, that in, in working in this way or, or practicing to work in, in this way more and more, we can begin to create what Otto Sharma calls landing strips for the future, which would be places and spaces that look like the food system we want to create so that it serves everybody. Thank you. <laughs>